I want to thank Bernie for inviting me to be here today and uh, good to know some of you guys. Um, I am from Decatur and uh, had retired, be two years in April, and um, God had other plans for me and my district superintendent had other plans and, <laughs> and asked me to go to the Auburn Nazarene Church in a difficult situation and, and uh, bring life and restore and, and uh, let God use me. And I did that uh, as an interim. But they got in our hearts, we got in their hearts, and uh, I think about four months in, I felt like God wanted me to be there as their pastor. So, I'm not retired. Um, <laughs> my son told me that, uh, Dad, we're not giving you another retirement party. And, uh, so, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, I'm planning on it. Well, well when I... Uh, Bernie asked me to come uh, about a year ago, I believe. And uh, I told him I would, didn't know what I would uh, share that at that point. But as it got closer, God started talking to me about some areas and, and being all men here today, uh, there's one thing I think is very important for all of us. And I'll develop that thought, and it's guard your heart. Um, how important it is that we do everything possible to guard our spiritual heart in our life as well as our physical heart. I'm going to read one verse of scripture right now, and then I'm going to read some, a couple others later. But Proverbs 4.23 tells us, above all else, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Everything flows from the heart. Um, your heart's the most important part of your body, the most important organ in your body. Uh, when, when you start having heart issues, and some of you sitting here may have some difficulties, you may have some medications you're on, when you start having heart issues, it affects every part of your life. Uh, it affects your income. <laughs> medication is not cheap. It, it affects how you feel. It affects your family. It affects your, your dreams. It, it just affects everything when you have some issues going on with your heart and your health. Well, likewise, your spiritual heart. When, when there's difficulties in your spiritual heart and there's problems there, uh, it affects you. It's not your experience, it's not your knowledge, it's not your skills, it's not your talents. It's your heart that matters most. Some of us be, may be well gifted in a lot of areas, but it's our heart that uh, needs to be taken care of. So I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about the necessity of guarding your heart. No one else can do it for you. We all may have great spouses, we may have great kids. Uh, we may have people in our lives that are very supportive of us, encourage us. But it's up to me, it's up to you to guard your heart. I've learned a long time ago, if I don't make that a priority, the enemy will, will work on me and destroy my heart, my spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Back in the mid-70s, uh, God called me into ministry. So it's been a long time ago that that process started in my life. Uh, I had raised in a church, but got away from church, got away from the Lord in the mid-20s. God got a hold of me and, and uh, turned me back around. And In the mid-70s, I felt a tug on my heart to uh, prepare for ministry. I had a great job. I had a career job. I worked at General Motors. Uh, I had spent uh, several years there. I started there when I was 19 years old. Uh, didn't plan on leaving. We had just built a brand new home. Uh, things were going well. I, I felt God had blessed uh, during that period of time. Yeah, but during that, God started laying on my heart the, the need to prepare for ministry. To do that, I'd have to sell my house, I'd have to quit my job, I'd have to move my family, and uh, yet I felt that's exactly what God wanted me to do. And so my wife and I, Dee, began the process of preparing, getting ready to move. So we put our house on the market. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Didn't sell it. Didn't sell it. I thought, I, I don't think I'm reading this wrong. I think God is definitely calling me. Uh, yet, uh, we didn't sell our home. I had to sell the house. I'm going to move my family clear across the country. We moved to Colorado Springs and attended Nazarene Bible College. And uh, if that was going to happen, I had to sell the house. Well, it didn't. So I continued to work, continued to uh, 
uh, served my church, continued to be a, a good Christian, and I started taking what was called a home study course, which is pretty antiquated today. But uh, I started that, thinking, well, that may be the process, but yet I knew I need to be on a campus somewhere preparing for ministry. And um, during that year, the enemy tried to rob me of my spirit, my heart, my life, tried to take away the joy, the, the commitment, the, the call even, that God had given to me. And, and I remember looking back to that year, I had to guard my heart. The enemy would have liked to have changed directions in my life and kept me uh, there in, the, in a good job, but yet not the place that God had for me. Uh, spring rolled around, and I felt the Lord saying, now's the time. Put your house back on the market. It wasn't, but three weeks, four weeks, our house sold. Boom. All right. Uh, we packed up our stuff, started getting ready, and we moved our family here across the country to uh, uh, NBC, Nazarene Bible College in Colorado Springs. If you've never been to Colorado, you need to go. Beautiful, beautiful state. But uh, we, we moved, and uh, that year of waiting proved to be maybe one of the best years of my life. However, I had to guard my heart. I had to make sure that I was obeying the Lord in, in all the areas of my life. But that year of waiting proved me so beneficial. If you look back now, you know, hindsight's always good, looking back in our lives. One of the blessings that came from waiting that one year, uh, I was able to get 10 years in with General Motors. I was 29 years old. I was started when I was 19. I was tenured for 10 years, so two years ago in April, I retired at 65, and GM started sending me a check every month. Wasn't that nice of them? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big check, but every amount, some of us retired guys know what it means to have a little more coming in. So if I been went, when I had nine years in, I would not have been tenured for retirement. God knew what he was doing. He, he helped me guard my heart. He helped me to guard my call. There'll be times that the enemy will want you to lose heart. There may be some here today struggling in some areas. <coughs> the enemy will want you to lose heart, give up, don't do it. Guard your heart. And watch how God will work in your life. Watch how he will open doors that you never be to realize I was 29 I'll be 67 in April God knew what I needed and would need at the age of 65 that experience of guarding my heart wouldn't be the last time that would be necessary I heard there are two or three pastors in here so I can they can relate to what I'm saying and uh, the need to guard our heart the enemy doesn't stop, does he? That, that experience <coughs> helped me, and I've, as I've journeyed in ministry across the years, I, I've cataloged a few other times that I need the Lord to just step in and keep me where I needed to be. I found it necessary down through the years to do what I had to do to guard my heart. I think that's why, as Christian men, we must be diligent <coughs> about guarding our hearts. King Solomon said it best, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Notice the words, above all else, above all else. To me, that, that clarifies something. It's important. It, it's important that I, I take the initiative to guard my spiritual heart and my life. And, and I'm going to leave you with three thoughts about that are, that are necessary. One is because your heart is extremely valuable. You know that physically. <laughs> Some of you may be taking medication because of your heart issues. You know how important that is. Your heart's valuable. I found that we don't guard worthless things. Uh, I take my garbage to the street every Thursday night. I don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I take it out there and set it on the sidewalk. I, I don't care what's in it. Uh, I don't look out the window to see if it's okay. <laughs> it's worthless. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. I don't care who goes through it. Just don't leave a mess. 
uh, if it's worthless. Not so with the heart. It's the essence of who you are, your heart. It, I know we, it beats inside our chest. It's our authentic self. It's the core of our being. It's, it's where all of our dreams, where all of our desires, where all of our actions, where everything is born. It's in our heart. Your passions of life come from your heart, come from your inner core of who you are. That's that last great idea that you had, or one right now that God's really prodding you on with, that comes from your heart, your dreams, your actions, your behavior. It's where God bursts, bursts those ideas. I've kind of been known to my kids as an idea man. I've always got a brand new plan for them to do, you know? Hey, let's try this. What do you think about that? God gives us those thoughts. He puts that in our heart, in our being where he bursts it. it is part of who we are as we connect to God and as we connect to one another. It's the heart that reaches out to others. I learned a long time ago if something was important or valuable to me, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to guard it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to make sure that, that uh, uh, it's taken care of. Certainly my spiritual life. I saved out an alcoholic situation and I knew if I, if I didn't value my spiritual life, I could fall right back into that whole mess. I, I guarded my spiritual life down through the years. I, I've guarded my family, my kids and my grandkids and my five great-grandchildren are very important to me. I'll guard them. I'll go to bat for them. I'll do anything that's necessary. I guard, guard their lives. I guard my job. I thought I retired, but <laughs> I guard my job. I, I appreciate where God has put me. Uh, I'm in a situation almost like where I started years ago. <clears throat> and I guard that. I guard my home. I guard my truck. Isn't that something? I like my truck. <laughs> I didn't drive it today, but it takes too much gas. But, uh, <laughs> I, I guard my truck. I guard my relationships. I go to any extreme to safeguard those and other things in my life. Uh, I would encourage you to go to any length. Things that are important to you, guard them. And I hope your spiritual life is, is one of those that is important. Uh, how do you do that? How do you guard your heart? You spend time in His Word. Right here. Spend time in this personally, collectively. You spend time in your prayer life. Prayer takes discipline. Prayer's hard work. Mm -hmm. Ask anybody. Prayer doesn't just come natural. I was driving over praying for some things at my church and other things. It wasn't long my mind was wandering off somewhere else. Yeah. We have to discipline ourselves. But, but to guard your heart, you have to be a person of the Word. You have to be a person of prayer. And, and I'm assuming, but... We all need to be in a Bible teaching church. Regular. Yes. Where, where we guard our heart. And we build the right relationships with one another. You, you guys got a good thing going here. Accountability people. Accountability person, maybe in your life. Those, those are some of the things that will guard your heart. There's certainly more, but this is probably one of the most important. Stay away from the things that will harm you. Amen. You know what they are. I'm not going to go through the list. But you know what they are right now. You're thinking about them. We have to stay away from those. Secondly, the thing that I see as a necessity of guarding your heart is because your heart is the source of everything you do. Everything. King Solomon said it's the wellspring of life. In other words, it's the source of everything else that takes place in your life. Your heart overflows into the thoughts, the words, the actions, the behavior. Your, your heart, and it, we're saying, you've heard the saying, junk in, junk out. Well, you put junk in there, junk's going to come out. Right. Feed your, your spirit with the wrong stuff, and that's what's going to come out. I remember sitting in a John Maxwell uh, 
conference, and, and he was talking about temptation, this particular seminar that I was in. He was talking about the temptation of the opposite sex. We've all been there. We're guys. <laughs> and that, I don't know why they made us like, why God made us like this sometimes, but, but we're all guys, and I thought I'd grow out of some of that. Hmm. Well, I guess I have, but I haven't. <laughs> I, remember, I remember John Maxwell talking to us, and he got very personal that morning. He come away from his podium and slipped down to uh, the edge of the stage, and, and he sat down like he just wanted to talk to us personally. And he did. And he said, when we're tempted, when that happens, or if it does happen, we have one recourse. Run. He gave us one word. Run. I've never forgotten that event. Never forgotten that moment that, that I was sitting there. And I probably wasn't any further away from here to the wall, that particular conference that I was at with him. And, and I've appreciated that advice. There's times I've had to run. I've had to just pick up my coat or leave my coat behind and get out of there. <laughs> King Solomon says our heart is the wellspring of life. Amen. We have to be careful what we feed it. When it comes to sexual temptation, it is everywhere. <laughs> You'd think they could dress the billboards up a little more, you know? <laughs> it's everywhere. And to guard our hearts, we have to discipline ourselves. I like to hunt, and, and I guess this may show that I do, but um, I hunt in Vandalia, if you know where that's at, with a couple, three other guys on a piece of property down there. There's a creek that flows through this 300-acre uh, piece of property that we hunt on. And right now, there are a family of beavers <laughs> building their house in, in this creek that flows through the property. Uh, they're, they're damming it up. They're, they're restricting the flow of the water that's flowing through that creek. And if they plug it up, the, and, and they're working pretty hard at doing that, if they plug it up, then the water's going to become stagnant. It, it won't flow like it needs to. Um, we want the water to be fresh going through there. We'll probably start trapping some of those beavers and in time destroy their house. But uh, likewise, in your heart, if it's become unhealthy, impacts you. If, if, if there's some things that are starting to lodge within your spirit, blocking the flow of God to flow through your heart, you need to do some things about it. You, you need to maybe be radical and blow some things up. Yeah. There's some things jammed up in your heart. If your spirit has become stagnant, if the God's spirit's not flowing through your heart, your life, not only threatens you, threatens your family, it, it threatens your friends, your ministry, your career, your intent, your legacy. It's therefore imperative to guard your heart. Keep the flow of the Lord going through your spirit. Let him flush you out. Kind of like what we heard Doc talk about a little bit ago, about the blood that flushes through our lives and forgives our sins. Amen. And my last area that I want to just leave with you today, the necessity of guarding our heart, because your heart is in constant attack. The devil will not quit. When Solomon says to guard your heart, he implies that you're living in a combat zone, one in which there are casualties. Casualties. I've seen it happen to friends of mine. It leaves a mess when Satan gets a believer. It leaves a mess behind. Broken families, broken hearts, lost jobs, financial ruin. On and on we can go. Um, it leaves a mess. Many of us, I think, at times are oblivious to the reality of that war that, that struggles against our spirit. We, we have an enemy who's bent on destruction. 
bent on destroying you personally, bent on destroying your home, bent on destroying your relationship with your spouse, your kids. The scriptures tell us that the enemy goes around as a roaring lion devouring whom he may. He not only opposes God, but he opposes everything that aligns itself with God. That's us. As we align ourselves with the Lord and the Spirit of God, uh, Satan opposes it. Since that's the case, then it's our responsibility to do all we can to guard our heart. Guard our heart. <clears throat> I'm not saying this to scare anybody today. I've learned a long time ago you can't scare anybody into right relationships. Um, but I am saying how important it is that you take all the precautions possible to guard your heart. As a pastor in, in, the, in our culture today, I, I find myself feeling like one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament, crying out. <laughs> Won't you listen? I, I feel that more and more the older I get. Probably in my younger years of ministry, I didn't feel that way, but now that I have a good crop of gray hair, okay, I feel like I'm almost like one of those minor prophets crying out to the remnant, crying out to the lost uh, to guard your heart. I, I say this because there are so many things the enemy uses to, to distract you and me from, from the Lord's direction, uh, to distract the believer and in many cases, I've seen him successful. Um, I've pastored for about 33 years now, something like that. And, and I've watched good people. Good women, good women, good families. Let the enemy destroy their heart. And walk away from the Lord, walk away from their church, walk away from their friends. Guard your heart. I can't do it for you. Yeah. I, I can just remind you of the importance of, of how it is a necessity in our culture more than ever before to guard your heart. I'm, I'm probably, and I'll close, I, I'm probably, I am, I'm in a setting right now that is smaller than any setting I've been in my whole ministry uh, years. But I have found so many bigger needs there in, in the Auburn congregation. Diverse needs. And, and the important thing that needs to happen is they need to guard their heart. They need to be drawn closer to the Lord. God is the answer. And, and I don't know where you are today. I don't even hardly recognize anybody. I guess I don't. <laughs> Just a couple people. I know Roger and I, I know Bernie. Other than that, I don't know you, so I don't know your walk of life. I don't know what you're struggling with, but I, I know that we're real men in a real world where the enemy will, will try to destroy, defeat, tear us down. <clears throat> and all I'm telling you to do today is to guard your heart. And, and with the passage that I've read, I want to read just a little more that goes with that, starting with verse 20. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are the life to those who find them and health to one's whole, one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Amen. Amen. We have to guard our heart and keep, keep our gaze on Jesus. And we can't go to the left or the right. Let me just close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this group of men today.
I don't know how many might have resonated in their heart or how many you have spoken to today about the importance of guarding their heart and how many could be struggling with some areas. I just ask, Lord, that you will put a hedge of protection around each man here, each home, each family. I pray, Lord, that each person will be drawn to you. They'll see the importance of guarding their heart because no one else is going to do it for them. And Father, I pray that you'll give them the strength to take that step in their life, if that's necessary, to guard their heart. There's a lot of people who can be affected if they don't. And the enemy loves to get believers to turn their back on God and walk away. Father, I just ask that You'll protect us. You'll keep us where we need to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise today and give you the thanks in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you for having me.